What's the meaning of Jesus going to hell before ascending? And what are the keys he took from death? Okay, <laughs> the J-man. Okay, this is what's happening, okay? Everybody's been sent on this blue mission of this external Jesus, okay? It's very important to understand that the Mashiach traditions, the ancient ones, the mother, the child, bringing the child in, the crystalline nature, the, the, the superior brachium, being on the cross of your own head, stuck between your decisions. So everything going on internally, okay? However, because that mystery was profaned, this means that there then becomes an external Messiah, just like, let's say, Anunnaki, or Anunnaki are below, Igigi are above. In every other tradition, they have this same phenomenon, angels versus demons, right? And so there's an external one that attempts to evoke itself and to take up that same space of power, okay? And very briefly, I just wanted to show you because it was just came in officially who the being that is now called itself Jesus, calls itself all sorts of things. It will take any name that it can get. It will call itself Pharaoh if it has to. It'll call itself anything. And let me just give you a quick glimpse in. So these, Michelangelo apparently, the painter, was so deeply aware of the occult mysteries and still trying to transmit to all the people that what was really happening in this occult sanctum that he was basically forced into. So in the back in these days, if you could paint or if you could play instruments or do something like that and you had that kind of talent, it's just like, let's say, as we talked about with the slavers, they would take you right away. So people like Michelangelo, Leonardo were central and key components, even uh, Beethoven, central key components in the time where these hyperdimensional, if you want to call it that, that only means that they live for a long time, by the way. So they can actually get to the memory strings of things that you have not necessarily lived through on the planet. So that's what hyperdimensionality hyper is. Let me turn this on. Hyperdimensionality hyper is you being able to access a space that is part of your memory string that is not a part of others' memory stream because they were not in that space. Now, to them, it appears hyperdimensional because you're moving through other areas that they do not have access to. So that's what hyperdimensionality is. So what you're looking at in this picture, if you can make it out clear enough, is Jesus Christ. OK, now that may seem odd to you, because if this was Jesus or as most people know them, know him, then most people wouldn't be worshiping somebody as ugly as this. <laughs> but common sense ain't common. This is where all of the images that have been coming in that people are still debating, are they authentic or not? This was Michelangelo's painting of who Jesus was in his diary, okay? Now, if you look at this skull that they also have of these specific beings, the Anak, the underworld entities, the ones who have been coming to earth acting like they were going to be the rulers over everybody. This is why this Jesus was crucified, because people did not want that. But that did not stop this tradition and them trying to continue this tradition and them making these pacts and oaths with gods from the netherworld all the way up until this day. Now, let me show you how you know that this is authentic. Now, this wasn't the original image, but somebody remastered the image so you can see the shape shifting, okay? This is the image of the, the one they know as on the planet now. He's taking this particular title because the other thing is, is that even when we say a Messiah, it doesn't mean that we're talking about one person. When we're saying a Marduk, it doesn't mean that we're talking about the same person that is consistently being the same thing. It is a title. So this is the Marduk. OK, they had already caught him recently in an interview. Some were some are already, you know, you, you would you expect that everybody doesn't know about this, but that's not the case. There are many societies that still remain a secret that are not aligned with this buffoonery that has been happening on the planet that are very aware of the entities that are moving around. And only if you realize what's going on. Like there was a lady that was high up in the UN that was being participating in these meetings that nobody else could participate in. And she said that one of the beings that kept coming through had a cone head, like literally like a cone head. This is from that same family lineage. They say also that these beings are directly from Mars. This is why Elon Musk and all these people that were going to Mars, we're going to Mars because they are from Mars. 
And they are not, especially the indigenous bloodlines, the melanated bloodlines, they are recessive. They destroy the sun on their world. They live in cold environments. Hell is not hot. Hell is cold. It's frozen over. Okay? So what we're talking about here is we're talking about the as above, so below. But now imagine when someone is directing their energy, that's why there's so many prophetic things happening right now that all seem to be related to the Bible and this doomsday theory that the Bible has cooked up in Revelations because it was cooked up by this creature. And just like you see, like right here with Nergal, just uh, this is the final part right here. You see that Nergal has these dogs, right, at its behest, right down here. It's because every deity has a pet, okay? And the pet is very symbolic to who they are. Like, for instance, Marduk's pet is a dragon, okay? So the reason why this becomes important is because this so-called Jesus character that, uh, that we're showing here the t that's taking the title of Marduk, because remember that these are all titles of nobility and royalty. Its pet is a gray. And next time when we tune in, maybe I'll show some pictures of that if it comes out in the key makers. It's being that it uses is a gray alien. So this is why the ships that you see coming in the air in the Leonardo paintings, Jesus standing up there, even though they have other pictures of Jesus, but the nice one when he shapes ships into sin, right? And the ships coming in, which are the UFOs, and, because, and then you even see grays in the background. And these were all drawn by these same group of arist aristocracy uh, artists. Okay. This is that awareness that, listen, this is what they've been evoking. This is what they've been playing around with. This is what they've been bling bringing in. And this is what they're getting others. That's why the Vatican. Look at the movie John Carter now again, since I showed you that picture that Michelangelo drew. And then... Going to John Carter, which is JC or Jesus Christ, that is the movie. Go to John Carter and see who John Carter finds out is the rulers inside of the pyramids. They look just like that. Now, black people get all up in, up in arms because they're like, it wasn't black. And they want to take credit for anything that is black. But I'm telling you, you don't want to take credit for this. There are many ancestors. Like I said, there are Igigis. There are other different beings that correspond to the family lines that are here on the planet. And I'm also saying that, yes, we are all family, but you do have these family members. Like I said, you can't choose your family. You have these family members that are gravitating towards the negative pole or the distorted pole. And there's going to be nothing you're going to be able to do. That was a question that some people were asking. That was a rhetorical question. There's going to be nothing that you're going to be able to do to convince them to stop doing what they're doing. They're trying to convince you to start doing what they're doing. They're holding space. <laughs> Literally, they're making up that vibration and that frequency and that spectrum for you to see. And that's not what I want to do, though. I don't want to become all like looking like that. Old and decrepit, moving around like a skexy. <laughs> Talking about my precious and what's mine. Not having the ability to let it go, being stuck in the underworld. Dead but dreaming. No longer living with life. That's not that's not something that I want to enjoy. But you will only know that is if those beings had come into the world. And also, it's when we say come into the world, those beings had come into the consciousness. Now we are aware of them. They have become alive. So this allows us also to ingest that properly, to digest, to put it in our ur, and to balance it out, and to make sure that the world doesn't feel the full brunt load of some imbalance. <laughs>